Hi, my name is Jacob Rogers, and I'm going to be reading um, a little bit of a story called Great White Shark that I translated from the Galician uh, by Samuel Solleiro. Um, I won't give a ton of context, even though I'm you know, starting in the middle, um, but it's a, narrated by a 20-something-year-old woman on vacation in an unnamed Caribbean island uh, with her 60-something-year-old professor or husband. The next morning, Matthew wakes up at 6.30 with his biggest smile, as if nothing out of the ordinary had happened last night. He's always like this, though I hoped he'd show a, bit, a modicum of consideration today and let the rest of us sleep in a bit. My head is throbbing. I'm hungover. I haven't been drinking much lately, and two glasses of rum was enough to give me a hangover. The quality of it didn't help either, because most of these tourists would feel like imposters if the hotel stocked a better rum. I go down to the cafe to have a coffee and an ibuprofen, and Matthew heads off to buy the paper. Pablo is at the cafe, eating toast. I'm sure he didn't sleep at all last night, but you'd only know it from the fact that he's wearing yesterday's shirt. I sit at his table. If I sat at another, it would be proof that we're sleeping together. I know what I'm talking about. He asks me how I slept, and I don't respond. The question strikes me as impertinent, overly familiar. Anyway, it's obvious from the ibuprofen that I didn't. Matthew totters over contentedly with the paper in the crook of his elbow. He greets Pablo with a pat on the shoulder. It looks like the papers are talking about the great white shark today, he says, as he drops the newspaper on the table. Pablo picks it up and flips through the pages. Here, says Matthew. The photo on the page is of whales, a mother and her two babies. I can't understand what it says, but it's clearly a photo of whales. This isn't a great white shark, Mr. Hooper, says Pablo. These are whales. It's a story about a pod of whales that was spotted 300 meters off the coast yesterday. Matthew points to a word in the headline. But doesn't this word mean shark? No, Mr. Hooper, that word means pod. Matthew has been caught out yet again. Pablo takes a napkin from the table and writes the word shark in his language. This is shark. If you see this word, then they're talking about a shark. Matthew orders himself a coffee by way of hand gestures. At mid-morning, a taxi drops us off at the place that Pablo, or the agency, I don't know, it's hard to tell sometimes, suggested we visit today. It's a waterfall at the mouth of a river, which means that the water falls directly over a cliff into the sea. The itinerary that Pablo, or the agency, has planned for us is to see the waterfalls first from above and then to take a series of paths down to the beach and look at the falls from below, the truly impressive sight. Matthew picks a branch up off the ground to use as a walking stick and strikes out on the path ahead of us, his chest puffed. We're going to places dozens of tourists travel through on a daily basis, and still he sees himself as an explorer. All he's missing are the compass and the canteen. Matthew can be so ridiculous sometimes. I walk in the middle, Pablo is at the back. He's acting very strange today, saying very little. I guess it's normal. He's bitter that I didn't come for our nightly tryst. Then I have the utterly nauseating thought that he thinks there's a chance I'll leave Matthew and marry him, or something along those lines. But I have no intention of leaving Matthew, much as he often deserves it. And anyway, marrying Pablo is the last thing I'd do on this earth. Fucking is one thing. Love is another matter entirely. Pablo tries to take my hand. I pull mine away. It's risky because Matthew stops every 30 seconds to take a photo of the landscape. He's given up on his eyeballs ever since he bought this digital camera. Pablo tries to take my hand again and I stroke his for a brief second with my, th with my thumb so that he won't think I want nothing more to do with him. And then the waterfalls are fine. They're fine the way these things tend to be fine. They're pretty, and two minutes later you don't know what to do with them. That night, Pablo asks me to marry him. More specifically, he asks me to move in with him. At least he didn't bring a ring, or anything else that would make the situ situation more unbearable than it already is. I tell him that I'm married to Matthew, and I mutter it so weakly that it's clear that this isn't the real reason, or rather, not the only, nor the most important one. Then he bites my nipples, but it's perfectly plain to me that this biting of my nipples has no value in and of itself. It's meant to say, 
Here's how I'd bite your nipples if you moved in with me. And then everything takes on such an artificial, vulgar character that I feel like I'm being buried alive on a plate covered in liver and boiled potatoes. And I'll stop there, but thank you for listening.